you've really sketched already uh, the relationship between really individual well-being and collective well-being or, or the ways in which our relationships um, are really an important source of personal resilience and well-being. So you've, you've definitely sketched that. And in a moment, we'll get into specific actions. But before we go further, I wonder if you could speak a little personally. Uh, what have you seen about that in yourself, that your own potential, um, your own big potential is really grounded in your relationships? Um, I see it when I struggle or I get tired or when I get burned out. I, I know that having other people around me helps so much. And one of my favorite studies in Big Potential is not mine. Uh, it came from two researchers in Virginia that found that if you're looking at a hill in front of you by yourself, if I'm perceiving a hill I have to climb, my brain judges that hill as being 10 to 20% steeper than if I was viewing a hill of the exact same height, but standing next to a friend three feet apart from me. So even the existence of somebody else in my world changes my perspective on that objective reality and makes those challenges I have in front of me seem less steep. Um, it's the meaning when I get to meet up with other authors or, uh, you know, practitioners and people who have made a positive uh, impact upon the world like yourself, this is what I, I'm hungry for because you want that connection. You want to know that you're, you're, that other people understand what you're going through. So I see it I, I see it on a daily basis in terms of how that makes it meaningful. And, and for me, like it's, you know, when I go out and speak at a school and then come back three years later and they've done something I never thought of before, you know, and that they're creating, I, I just went out to uh, Orlando Health and it's a hospital where the, uh, the night after the night pulse shootings occurred, we've been doing uh, where they send all the trauma victims. We've been working with them for two years before this, trying to increase resilience of the, uh, the medical staff there. And they would start their staff meetings with things that they were grateful for. So when something bad happened, they had this storehouse. And then the morning after the night pole shooting, the second largest shooting in US history, they started with gratitudes again, because they knew that's what is gonna help their emotional immune system as they're dealing with this. So I went back out there to see what they're doing and they came up with something, they had a random act of kindness parade where they would go and instead of just sending an email to somebody to praise them, they would have 10 people go to their room. But as they walk in this parade to that person's room, people would start to come and connect in. And so by the time we got there, cause I was, videotape and walking and watching this beautiful thing happen, 25 to 30 people came out of their offices to see what was going on and followed. So there was 30 people there and I looked around the room and it wasn't just the person receiving the praise, it was the 30 people that were part of something mm -hmm. to make somebody else's life better. And when they went back to their offices, they're engaged, they're positive, they're gonna be more resilient. And so I think that that's it. The, as I see this over and over again, and I see it in my own life, is that it's the inclusion of others in that pursuit of happiness and success that makes it all worthwhile.